slide, let me introduce um, Dr. Ho again. Our Dr. Ho, Michael Ho, during the COVID period, he does a lot of different jobs. And uh, here he goes, uh, let me pass the time to him. Welcome. During the early stage of COVID since 2019, I have act actively involved in the, even the service and the support of the relative healthcare services. For example, if you remember that, um, at the very early, early stage, there was a holding center of test results at Kowloon City, the Rigo Hotel. What was that? If you remember, all the passenger got off the flight at the night time, all of them would be sent to the hotel because they had to wait for the COVID test result. Then at the morning, we will we would get the result and announce to them if they were negative, then we will release them and they could go back to home. If they were positive, then we will send them to the hospital or even the quarantine center. And after that, I involved in the, the management and also the fun night of the universal community testing and also the vaccination center of you received the vaccination, right? And also the penny-based quarantine center, the Asia World Expo facility, and also the, the, the outreach program for the elderly. We, we went to the elderly's home and gave them the vaccination at the OH home more convenient for them and etc. So here today, I know that all of you have very good understanding about COVID, but I will share some real cases to you and the opportunity due to COVID and the healthcare development in the coming few years. Okay, here. You can see the picture. I support the COVID patient at the Asia World Expo and also the Committee Vaccination Center. During COVID, you saw that um, everything has been changed. Even your lifestyle, some of you may enjoy the delivery of the food to your home. You enjoy online shopping. And some of you also enjoy the, the online consultation, right? I remember that around 10 years ago, because I, I did a research about, about uh, telehealth, because telehealth was very common since around maybe 10 years ago in United States. For example, you know, in, in United States, they are very large, and even in some cities, the patients if they want to access a clinic or hospital, they need to drive maybe 30 minutes or over an hour. It would be inconvenient for them if they want to follow up with a wound after surgery. So how they did it? They used the mobile phone at uh, around 10 or 20 years ago, they used Nokia. They took a picture of the wound and then sent to the hospital and the doctor will, will, would review whether they need to follow up earlier, or if their wound was stable, they can follow up later. Because they had a wound, it is inconvenient for them to, to drive over an hour to go to the hospital. They might feel pain. At that moment, United States already used the telehealth. And at that moment, I also talked to a CEO of a clinic group in Hong Kong. I told him that telehealth would be a trend in Hong Kong, but he rejected. Why? He said that in Hong Kong, because in Hong Kong, you see, a very small place. We have over 30 hospitals and over 1,000 clinics in Hong Kong. You, you can count. The clinics in Hong Kong may be more than the convenience store, right? Everywhere, every street. 
so the CEO of the Kinder Group rejected that. He said that um, it, it would be very convenient for the patient to go everywhere. That's why they can, they can the Kinder Group can earn a lot. And he thought that another concern is the legal concern because I talked to another shareholder of the Kinder Group who was a daughter and he concerned that the picture sometimes may not really reflect, for example, the color of the wound. So then the daughter might make a worn diagnosis. They concern about the legal issue. Certainly I, I told, uh, told them that you can set the terms and conditions. And in case you really find that it might have any other disease or problem or diagnosis, you can request the patient to go to the clinic or hospital for further checking, right? But certainly they, they finally reject that. But I believe that it would be a trend. Somehow it would be convenient and useful and effective for many patients. And you say, see that uh, during COVID and even in public hospital, you know that in the past 30 to 50 years, the doctors, nurses, and all the healthcare professionals, they use the paper to write down everything, the progress, the prescription, whatever. It is old school. Why? Because when I have the exchange in Korea, I went 10 years ago, Korea. So you can search. There is a Samsung city. What is that? That's a very large place owned by Samsung. And there, there, there are two buildings and each building around maybe uh, 30 or 40 floors. And the building is mainly for elderly. And they have set up all the equipment by Samsung, even the, the blood pressure machine, machine, thermometer, and all the healthcare related facilities and equipment by Samsung. They can send, use the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth uh, to send all the data to the health clinic. And the healthcare professional can monitor their status and health conditions. So you see that even 10 years ago, Korea already using the telehealth and the e-health. But in Hong Kong, when did we use it? COVID at the, at the uh, Asia World Expo and also the Hong Kong Infection Center because uh, uh, at the worst moments in Hong Kong, there, there were around maybe over 500 or over 1,000 patients in the Asia World Expo and hospital. It, is, it was impossible for all the healthcare professionals to check the blood pressure maybe three times a day and then we record down and then check the temperature and record. It was impossible even for the doctors to review all the, all the prescription and data and information. So at that moment, they <coughs> start using the, the thermometer or, or the blood pressure machine with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. After the patient, they measure all the data, it will synchronize and send to the computer. And then all the healthcare professional can read it and the system will alert us if the blood pressure is very high or if they have a fever. So at that moment, Hong Kong start using it. But you see that even in many public hospitals, they are still using paper. And, and the HA hospital authority said that it may take uh, three or five years to change the system. Five, three to five years, okay. And that's the investment control center. And we manage uh, many uh, confirmed the case in the hospital and even the, the penny base. So um, you know uh, very well about the COVID, but um, uh, I can share to you about uh, some, some definitions. Some of you may not really understand that. That's the pandemic and the, the endemic. During the outbreak of COVID, and you hear the terms pandemic and also endemic. What's that? Pandemic, Bai Lao Han. This means a disease, 
existing in almost or all of an area or in almost all of a group of people. So you, you, if you remember that the picture, oh, I learned that COVID was pandemic. Um, maybe at the early of uh, 2020. There's a, a, a many people concerned about that, but they need to collect some data. And if after that, uh, they said there is a epidemic, uh, this means the rapid spread of a particular disease in a large number of people at the same time. And most of the people concerned that if COVID will be an endemic disease, Fong Tou Ban. And WHO already announced that and maybe around a few months or half a year ago that COVID will most likely be exist in the world forever. Just like food. You can see influenza outbreak every two, maybe two times a year, every year. Even our healthcare facilities are very good, but we cannot stop spreading the influenza, just like COVID. So endemic means especially of a disease or a condition regularly found and very common among a particular group or in a particular area. And certainly, I've shared some information about whether COVID will turn into the pandemic uh, in YouTube. In, if you are interested, you can go to have a look and get more information. Because today, I just want to share uh, more real cases and the upcoming opportunity or our, our lifestyle changes due to COVID. So our, our strategies, of handling or overcome the COVID is a first uh, continuous vaccination. I am here, I can say that even you receive three doses of the COVID vaccine, then in some countries, maybe United States, they will, they will announce that there will be a new vaccine for the new mutation of the COVID, maybe before winter or before or after winter, because um, this, virus, the COVID, and uh, maybe more active uh, in, the, in the winter. So that's why now this uh, summer in Hong Kong, everything would be better. But just like influenza, the virus uh, with the lower temperature, they would be more active and easy to spread to others. So after you receive three doses of vaccination, it doesn't mean that you would not positive, but it can minimize your maybe symptoms due to COVID if you are, uh, have the COVID. And the second thing is that virus is very smart. They will try to do everything to make sure that the virus will exist in the world forever. How they do it? They will try to, for example, if COVID will would maybe if COVID would kill a person in a short period of time, then certainly we will notify the virus here and we will burn the bodies and maybe uh, isolate. Then the virus would be killed. But how they change or mutate, they will want, they want to exist in the world. So they will try to spread easily. So at the early stage of COVID, the COVID is spread by maybe the droplet, okay? But now it is airborne through the air. So WHO already announced that if you want to prevent COVID, you must wear N95. For surgical masks, it only can prevent the, the disease spread by the droplet, not the airborne, okay? only N95. So I've handled over a thousand COVID patients every time I must wear the N95. So I've never had COVID. Even I have very close contact when taking care of them or have the consultation, I, I, I went to their home, wherever. So this photo also at the Hong Kong Infection Center, 
And I just want to show you this photo because the umbrella, just like sometimes we may have raining, but what we can do, we can use the umbrella, try to protect the person. For example, just like COVID, we should try to protect the elderly, protect the people who have chronic disease and protect the children. And this should be fine for all the healthy adults. Actually, they can recover even without too much medication or without uh, any symptoms, right? And this is the picture of uh, our program. Uh, we went to the elderly's home and, and gave them the vaccination and more convenient for them. That's why I repeat, we have to protect all the elderly or protect the people with chronic disease. This would, would be more important. And how COVID change our life or lifestyle? Um, I, I would like to share three points here. And you, uh, you can see that uh, COVID had uh, many impact to the business over the world. Some company or business has a very worse condition in this period of time. But you can see that for the pharmaceutical, uh, the, the, the drug company, and also the healthcare facilities and, and some healthcare technology. There would be many business opportunity for them to grow. So I will share some information about the use of technology and the upcoming opportunity. And the second one is the demand of home service, not only about healthcare, but I, said that before, you enjoy order the food and deliver to your home, and you enjoy online shopping, and you enjoy uh, whatever uh, they can deliver to your home, even the, the, some, uh, some uh, equipment you want, whatever. And also, the concept of health or healthy, many people has changed after COVID, because they find that it is very important to take care of the health, no matter how wealthy they are. And in COVID, uh, certainly even for my uh, service and my company, um, because uh, one of the service of my company is um, uh, global evacuation of the patients. Sometimes we may send the patients from Hong Kong back to their home country, and sometimes we will um, um, pick up some patients, they may want to get back to Hong Kong, but they have some problems or disease, they are unable to get on the fight by themselves. So in this COVID, almost all the evacuation case has been stopped because uh, at the early, early stage, if a nurse escort a patient from Hong Kong to, uh, for example, United Kingdom, they need to quarantine uh, the, the nurse for three weeks. How? If I send a nurse and escort a patient and you need to quarantine and send my nurse to the quarantine center or hotel for three weeks, the charge would be very high. And even the nurse reject that. If I ask the nurse to go there and you need to stay in the hotel for three, hotel room for three weeks, and I believe that the nurse could not accept that. It would be very crazy and affect your emotion or psychological problems, right? And even the charge would be very high for the patients. So uh, even from Hong Kong, even now, uh, may be better. But uh, some countries, they still need to uh, quarantine the patients. Or if you want to go to China, then they have uh, 14 days uh, plus seven days for the observations. Then it's uh, too much for them. But besides that, and uh, some of the pilots, they need to uh, go to the, get, uh, get on the plane. Uh, because uh, when they are far around Hong Kong, we need to send them to the quarantine hotel. But if they want to go back, they could not go by themselves. And the government didn't arrange anything or support for them. And some of the fight company, they contact us because we will have uh, many nurses, and they will put on the PPE and escort the pilot from even the quarantine center 
directly to the restricted area of the airport. And then all the pilots can get on the flight and leave Hong Kong because they are daily, daily, and uh, even their, their income is very high. It is impossible to keep them in the quarantine center for seven days or longer. It would be a disaster for the, for the airline company, right? So at this case, I also escort a pilot to the, the restricted area of the airport. And sometimes I may escort the patient from their home to the penny base directly. And I need to wear the full PPE with the N95 mask. And about the healthcare technology. As I told you before at the Asia World Expo and even uh, now in some uh, uh, infection center in Hong Kong and or some uh, quarantine facilities, we start using the, the healthcare technology to check the vital size of the patients and or even uh, the patients can enter their, their uh, symptoms or achieve complaints to the system or through the mobile phone. And then we'll send, send the, the data to the computer and all the healthcare professionals can read it more easily and all the treatment and the care plan would be more effective and efficiency. And the people also, they would accept the medical technology easily. If 10 years ago, you ask a patient to consult a doctor or even the dietitian through the mobile phone, they may not accept that because they want to directly have the, the communication with the dietitian and they didn't feel good through the screen. But now they accept that. We also provide this kind of service, even the, the, the physiotherapist or dietitian, sometimes they can uh, uh, maybe discuss with the patient or teach them how to do some simple exercise through the screen. So the telehealth, e-health and remote health is uh, currently uh, more, more um, uh, convenient for the people and they accept that. And this is the, the Asia World Expo. And this is the photo of the, all the equipment uh, I mean, the pressure machine, also the oximeter, and also the thermometer in the infection, Hong Kong Infection Control Center. And every time they admit to the ward, we will teach them how to use it. They will scan the, the QR code on the wristband, and then they check all the vital size, and then press the button, and all the data will directly upload to another computer. And then we will have the information. We will, some, some patients, we may um, need to ask them to check maybe two times a day. If their condition is not very stable, then maybe three times or four times a day. Or every time they feel discomfort or maybe they press the call bell and said that they, they feel like a fever, then we'll ask them to check again. Then we will have the data outside the room. So we did not every time put on the PPE and get inside the, the ward. And uh, then it may increase the risk of infection or infect other healthcare professionals. So it would be the healthcare technology can minimize the chance of infected other people or some, some infected other healthcare professionals. So you see that um, in the past few years, uh, except at the last maybe March or April because they're spreading in the committee of the COVID in Hong Kong, none of the healthcare professional was infected by COVID due to the care of the COVID patient in Hong Kong, none. Except in the past, uh, I, I told you that in March or, or February because the spreading in our community. Sometimes they may be infected by the family members or infected by other person on the street or in the, in the shop or whatever. And the demand of the on-site or home service are increasing. Even in healthcare service, or I, I, I said that as the shopping, the food ordering, whatever. The people accept that the consultation or get some second opinion through, the, through the, even the mobile phone, through the computer screen. And also for my company over 10 years, we mainly provide the home service because 
we knew that the demand will be very high. Even, for example, at the elderly, if they want to uh, do the blood test in hospital, they maybe they are not good at walking or their, their mobility is not very good. They need to go to the hospital and spend one hour and wait in the hospital for another hour, then draw the blood and go back home. It takes maybe three hours, and sometimes it may increase the risk of fall or other problems. So why don't we go to their own home and draw the blood for them? So uh, during COVID, especially in March and April, there are many patients contact me or contact us about, uh, because I'll share you uh, one example. Um, a, a, uh, some, somehow a client called me and said that her father and mother, they live together and they were tested positive at home and they feel very sick and discomfort. They went to the a and &E of the hospital, but the healthcare professional only gave them Panadol and asked them to go back home and nothing. But they know that they really feel very sick and the appetite is very bad and dizziness and weakness, whatever. And at that moment, I knew that there would be some problem. And I went to their own home with another nurse. We put on the full PPE at the floor of the, the, the apartment. And then we get inside and have a look of them. And did some uh, uh, check their vital signs and also draw the butt. And finally, we found that their, their butt results were very bad. The potassium and the, the, the sodium were very low at a critical area. If they didn't take adequate potassium and sodium in coming one or two days, then I believe that they might unconscious or even would be a critical stage. And we encourage them to try to eat more, even their appetite was very bad. In other case, we need to set up the intravenous fluid in their home. And finally, they will recover. So because at that moment, even you call the, call the, the 999, call the emergency hotline, or even you went to the hospital, nobody can, could, could help them. So the home care service would benefit to many people, even uh, during the COVID or in coming years. And also the, the, it depends, for example, the therapy service, it depends some of the, the for example, the physiotherapy, we can teach the client to do the simple exercise through the screen. But certainly some, some physiotherapy, we need to ask them to go to the, the uh, therapy center and show them. It depends, but somehow some of the service we can change to the online mode or the, the through the screen and give them, for example, the dietitian is not, not necessary to go to the dietitian center because we just understand their medical, uh, medical uh, conditions. And also we need to know how to improve their diet or nutrition. Even through the screen, the dietitian can do it and more even more convenient for the patients and avoid the chance of infection, right? And also the deliver of medical equipment, materials, the people now enjoy the, the home service and the delivery service. Even for the TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, you see that during the COVID, the medicine also will deliver to the patient's home. That's the, for the home service. And this uh, one, one of the photo that I went to a cancer home and, and then I put on the full PPE before I enter to do the home. And this the um, outreach program to give the vaccination for the elderly. And the last one is the health concepts. It has been changed 
because according to WHO, what is health or healthy? This mean, it doesn't mean that only physical condition is good, but your psychological conditions and psychological health and also your social health. This healthy. So in this, uh, during the COVID, many people start understanding it because if I send you to the quarantine center and keep you there for one week or two weeks, then your emotion or psychological health will be affected. So that's why many people or many patients after the COVID, because they already stay in the hospital for two or three years. In a, a, I remember that a worst case at Hong Kong Infection Control Center, the Indian, because uh, his health condition was not very good. He stayed in the hospital for around six months. Six months, you, you can emerge how your emotion. So, so sometimes we understand the patient because the, sometimes the patient keep pressing the call bell because he want to draw the alert from us because in his room, no other patients, only he stay in the room. And sometimes our healthcare professional not besides the room. We work in other ward or other area unless he press the call bell. So that's why he press, keep pressing the call bell sometimes, or sometimes he complain the, the, the lunch or dinner, uh, repeat and repeat or whatever. So that, that's a disaster, right? Keep you there for six weeks, okay? And not only prevention of disease, and the people now understand the health promotion, certainly I, I also teach the subject of health promotion in other university. So this means we have to understand our health conditions before we really get sick. If we get sick and then consult the, the doctor or go to the hospital or clinics, now then you are treating a disease. But what we are talking about is before you get sick, we already improve your health condition. Even many, many countries, they understand that if we can promote the health of the citizen, we can save a lot of expenses in a city or in a country. Just like if you, for example, treat a, a um, cancer, colon cancer, maybe you need to spend a lot of time and money to, to, to do the surgery and then maybe the, the radiotherapy or chemotherapy. But if we can screen the cancer before you really confirm that have uh, the, the, the colon cancer, then not only we can save the time, but also can improve the quality of life and also save a lot of money. That's why in Hong Kong, you see that there, there, there was a, a screening of the colon cancer since around five to 10 years ago. But there are many diseases. Uh, colon cancer is one of the major diseases in Hong Kong. And also the elderly care. The people also concerned about the elderly care uh, due to the COVID, especially the, the home care service. And we have visited many always home. The, the environment is really bad in Hong Kong compared with other countries because uh, everywhere Hong Kong is very small. The always home cannot provide a larger space for the elderly. That's another problem. But there would be another chance to improve the elderly care in Hong Kong. And also about um, the, the uh, recover after COVID. I also uh, have some uh, information. Some people may, some patients may experience the change of the smell or the, the taste. And you see that at uh, this uh, video, around uh, 12,000 people already watch it and hope it can help you if you want to know more. So the business related to COVID, even PM post COVID or in the in the expected upcoming years, uh, the COVID may be, uh, still affect many countries or people. But if you have uh, watched the recent uh, movie about dinosaurs, you remember the word coexist. That movie said that 
the dinosaurs, dinosaurs uh, were, were here and the people also here. We need to know how to coexist. And for COVID, it's the same, coexist. We need to find a way to be together because the COVID will be exist here for many and many years and they will keep mutation and mutation. But we can, we need to protect the elderly, try to protect the children or the people with chronic disease. And that's very good. So the people concerned about the alternative therapy, even besides the Western medicine, the people start try to start uh, uh, the uh, finding out more information about the TCM, traditional Chinese medicine. And even the health supplements, they try to look for the, the home service. The, even the medical, medical and nursing equipment or some testing equipment to test the, the rapid test of the COVID and some health technology. So there are many business opportunity due to COVID. We have to think how to take this opportunity and improve the quality of life of the citizen and even for the people in the world, around the world. So, um, thank you for participating in this talk. And any questions for me or- No matter whether it's traditional Chinese medicine or a Western uh, medicine, I think there are lots of synergies that uh, business students can help with not just COVID, but medicine and the development of the medical industry in general. For instance, um, can you hear me? Is it working? Okay. So for instance, um, we can use things that we understand now, things that you're learning now, such as big data, such as IoT, such as uh, using for uh, what Dr. Moon says, that we can use different games or AR, VR uh, technology to help facilitate and encourage the recovery period for long COVID patients, for instance, using big data, IoT, to gain data for our um, patients, <laughs> patients, um, their medical history, um, and, and access that wherever they are. Also, in a lot of other countries, actually, IoT, they are thinking about wearables being linked to insurance. So think about it, your Apple Watch actually takes count of how many steps you do every day. Now, when you buy insurance, you take a normal health check before you buy insurance. But what if they can say, well, you're not doing exercise every day. We're gonna charge you extra pre uh, premium for your insurance package. It's just like having that black box in your car for buying your um, car insurance. Also, if you're thinking, oh, this is a industry that perhaps doesn't give much revenue, you can't really develop, it's not easily sustainable. There is actually a case seven or eight years ago in Taiwan where they were trying to help deliver medicine to patients and the government helped fund that. So they set up a social enterprise and all they were doing was just logistics essentially. They were actually just finding people who were unable to get, get access to their medicine and supporting that network. And now they're a listed company. And this was started seven, eight years ago. So you can imagine with very, very little knowledge back then, they can already expand and help and do so much from a commercial point of view. But let alone now we have lots of other um, technology and other developments in the business world. So I think this is very, very important for our students to find the synergies and common ground between these two different industries and many other industries and use your uh, technology knowledge and your business acumen to support that and collaborate. Okay, um, any, any questions from the audience here? Uh, it's up to you, Guo Yu, English or Cantonese. <laughs> it's a long distance um, that uh, make some patients uh, hard to get hospital or to reach to some uh, machines or, uh, like that and the second conflict is uh not we don't get enough resources like doctors or just um whatever healthcare machines 
So um, the solution is about uh, using that uh, whatever AR or uh, long distance uh, communication or big data. And what if we use that into a TCM? For example, we use a machine to detect uh, how a patient's, I don't know how to say it in English, uh, how the patient's mind. Yeah, and, and can we just transform all those data or and simulate it, the data and that a real doctor can feel it in a long distance? Is that achievable? Yeah. Uh, so Dr. Ho, I guess these are the questions for you, right? How to use technology in the, uh, in the current COVID? Actually, in, even in China or in Hong Kong, there's already a machine, maybe around two years, to check the through the machine. And the, the machine can detect around maybe uh, 30 or 40 different kinds of mud. And so the technology already using for that. And even I, I can tell you that even for um, Chinese medicine or Western medicine, one of the key information to diagnose the disease is the chief complaint of the patient. So for example, even for, for the Western medication or Western medicine, if a patient said that they feel pain here, we will ask a lot of questions. For example, how you feel pain, uh, the, the, uh, when you feel pain, whether pain will radiate to your arm and whether you feel pain before or dinner or lunch or after a meal or the pain will occur at nighttime or whatever, whether you have uh, the family history of any, any relevant disease and whatever. So the chief campaign is one of the key information that we can make a general diagnosis. Certainly, if we need uh, further, further imaging, uh, MRI, CT, whatever, blood test, any other thing, then we can make more accurate diagnosis. So, and through the telehealth, we can support more patients in a short period of time and also make it more effective and efficiency. So that's why the technology, technology can help or is developing in even in other countries or China. In China, there are many remote areas in the mountain area and the people could not uh, consult the doctors with other specialty because in the mountain only maybe uh, one, one doctor, a uh, general one to take care of the, the many village. So through the telehealth, then other specialty can also achieve the chief campaign or the information through the system, through the mobile phone. You can see that there are many apps in China about the, the healthcare service and the online consultation. So I believe that uh, there would be a great opportunity about even the healthcare technology, about how to generate the big data together with the, the knowledge of the medical nursing and healthcare services together. Uh, doctor has um, uh, introduced that um, we may focus on a future a bigger market about the uh, prevention of any disease. Is the, um, I would call it uh, pre-healthcare or I don't, I don't know what, uh, so that's why I so focus on the so-called mind because um, in TCM uh, opinion, I believe that the most important is uh, to uh, um, find the disease before it has symptoms, right? So when it doesn't have symptoms, oh, well, we, we cannot actually discover its uh, disease. Uh, we said, for example, we can really check these patient's mind or like this. So uh, that's why I think if we can check this in uh, machine form or so we can apply this uh, to, a, to, a, to a broader range, maybe to some orderly care or uh, to prevent some disease. Yeah, uh, very good question. Um, okay, I give you one example. For example, if we want to simply check whether a patient 
may have the risk of suicide. Then there's a form and scale. We will ask them a lot of questions, whether you want to commit suicide in the past one month, and whether you want to hurt yourself in the past few years, whether you did it before and etc. Certainly, there are lots of form. Maybe we can change it to the, 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 the input it into the system and then people can just fill in the form, whether you feel any, any pain in the past one month, and whether you feel dizziness, whether, whether your blood pressure is very high in the last month, etc. We can help to monitor their health condition in case they find it any problems, then we can have further checking and or some diagnostic test. So it can prevent the disease before you diagnose of any disease or get it very worse. But in the past years, the people, the, the only their, their concept is the sick model. They get sick and then consult a doctor. But for TCM or even uh, for me, I, I, I always talk about the health promotion before you feeling discomfort or before you really have hypertension. We, can, we may be able to, to improve it or you may not necessarily to take the medication. If you find it in the early stage, we can use, for example, improve your lifestyle, improve your diet, improve your, your, your for example, do more exercise, whatever. Thank you, everybody. And I guess that's the end for today. Thank you.